and welcome to Storytime with Thisbe. Today I have chosen a book that the art is just so beautiful that I am going to be filming it instead of myself. I hope you enjoy. This is called A Medieval Feast, written and illustrated by Alki. It was announced from the palace that the king would soon make a long journey. On the way to his destination, the king and his party would spend a few nights at Cabinton Manor. The lord of the manor knew what this meant. The king traveled with his queen, his knights, squires, and other members of his court. There could be hundreds of mouths to feed. Preparations for the visit began at once. The lord and lady of the manor had their serfs to help them. The serfs lived in huts provided for them on the lord's estates, each with their own plot of land. In return, they were bound to serve the lord. They farmed the land, managed the manor house, and if there was a war, they had to go to battle with the lord and the king. But for now, they prepared. The manor house had to be cleaned, the rooms readied, tents set up for the horsemen, fields fenced for the horses, and above all, provisions had to be gathered for the great feast. The lord and his party went hunting and hawking for fresh meat. They trapped rabbits and birds of all kinds, and fished for salmon and eels and trout. There were fruits and vegetables going in the garden, herbs and flowers for sauces and salads, and bees made honey for sweetening. Grains were ground into flour at the Lord's Mill, and baked into trenchers and other breads. Butter was churned, cheese was made, and ale and wines were ready in the brew house. The king was almost there. The food was prepared in the great kitchen. There were many cooks and scullion boys to help them. Pigs and deer and wild boar turned on spits. Great pots of salted meat were boiled into stews, seasoned with spices that only the rich could afford. Swans and geese, heron and quail were roasted. So was a rare beast called a cockentrice. It was really a capon and a suckling pig that were cut in half, stuffed, and sewn together again, each to the other's half. A peacock was cooked, then re reassembled with its feathers, and four and twenty blackbirds were baked in a pie. I think we've heard that song before. By the time the king and his party arrived, everything was ready. The guests swarmed into the great hall at half past ten in the morning. Trumpets announced the king, who sat at the high table with his hosts and other honored guests. They washed their hands in scented water and wiped them dry on a clean towel. The bishop chanted grace, and then they ate, and ate, and ate. They ate some of their food with spoons. They ate the rest with their fingers. They cut pieces from the meat the carver put on their trenchers with knives that they had brought with them. Drums beat and trumpets sounded as one surprise followed another. They ate meat pies and fish tarts and thick soups called eggerdus and bucanade. They ate boar's head and cow's tongue and pudding de swan neck. So that stuff doesn't sound that appealing, does it? They ate a whole castle molded out of pastry, stuffed with meat, eggs, fruits, and nuts, and wondered how they managed... 
Sweet and spicy sauces dripped into their trenchers as jesters, jugglers, and minstrels entertained them. Course followed course, each ending with a fancy marzipan sculpture called a subtlety. After the guests admired them, they ate those, too. They ate and ate until dark. It was a feast fit for a king, and there would be more tomorrow. Now, one of the more interesting things about this is that in the Medieval Feast book, this is really what a Medieval Feast might have been like, around 1400 and about England. When the king announced he would visit, the Lord was shaken. The expense of the preparations could cost him his fortune. It had happened to others, but he had no choice. At least the Lord could be glad it was summer and there was fresh food. In winter, there would have been few vegetables and little fresh meat. Farm animals were killed in late autumn as there was not enough to feed them to last them through the winter. The meat was preserved in salt or smoked and eaten in stews during the cold months when people could not hunt. Those stews were served at this banquet. The fresh meat and fowl were far more welcome. Medieval feasting was an art. Cooks not only prepared delicious food, they used their wild imagination as well. They molded pastry into castles, sculptured desserts into kings and queens and elaborate scenes, all decorated with food paint. Live jugglers jumped out of puddings, birds were baked into pies, but sometimes live blackbirds were hidden in a pie to fly out at astonished guests. Each new dish was announced by trumpets and drums, and in between there was music and song. The Lord did his best, and the king was given a feast to remember. So I think it's pretty cool to know what that would have been like. Thank you for joining me again today, and we'll see you tomorrow.